WordPress is an extremely popular website builder. That is a lot of blogs that are created and many more blogs are popping up each day. I got a comment on one of my videos asking if I could talk about the structure of the blog post, where the H1, H2, H3 heading tags come in, doing no follow links and things like that. And of course, yes, I can definitely do a video on that. So if you guys have any questions like this one, or just in general of videos that you want me to create or things that you don't understand, leave a comment down below asking, can you do a video on this topic? Because chances are, yeah, I can do a video on that topic. So I use the Gutenberg plugin for my WordPress block editor. It's a free plugin that you can download and I talked about it a little bit in my last video, which you can check out up there. But for today, I'm going to give you a more full tutorial on it and how I structure my blog posts and things like that. Now let's start out with the basics. The way that Gutenberg works is every time you hit enter, it creates what is called a new block. So for example, if I want to put a new line here, I will hit enter and then you can see type to choose a block or you can just type out your blog post as per usual. And the first block that I have here in my blog post is called called a reusable block. And for those of you that don't know, if you're using affiliate links in your blog post, you legally need to disclose when you are doing that because if people buy something from you, then you're going to be making money off of it and legally you need to disclose that. So I used to have a plugin that would put in whatever I wanted to say, the affiliate link disclosure, it would automatically put it into any one of my blog posts. But when I was looking at ways to speed up my site, I was told that that was one of the things slowing my site down. One of the suggestions that I got for using this but speeding it up was to use a reusable block. I don't know what I would want to say every single time, but let's just say I want to say subscribe to the channel. Click on the options and create reusable block. Then I can name that reusable block, whatever I want it to be. I'm not going to do that because obviously I don't want that as a reusable block, but now I named this one up here, affiliate disclosure. So I can do slash affiliate disclosure and it will automatically put in my affiliate disclosure. This makes it a lot easier so that you don't have to type it out every single time for every single blog post. You can just type in slash AFF or whatever you want it to be, and it will put in wherever you want it to go. The other block options that we have here that I use pretty often is heading. We're going to go over headings a little bit later because there's a lot that goes into it, but heading is one of the ones that I use a lot. And if you want to add any images, you can use image. So you can either just type in slash and select from here, or you can type in slash image. And there's a few different ones that you can do. I just personally just use image. You can click on upload, which will take you to your computer and you can find the image from there. Or if you have an image that you want to use that you already have loaded onto your website, you can go to media library. These are all of the images that I have on my blog. So let's say I want to use this image here. I can just click on it, select, and then it will show up right there. Another one that I do is list. You can see I have a list right here. So you can either type slash list and it will bring up a list for you. Or what you can do is use this little dash right here and just type in space and it will bring up a list for you. That's more typically what I do than searching for a list is just something like that. The next one here is for YouTube videos. You can see I have this HTML code right here. If I actually click on preview, this is what you'll be seeing in the front end of my site. You'll be seeing a YouTube video. You don't have to use the HTML code for YouTube. Unfortunately, for my theme, it doesn't work the way that I'm about to show you. Let me just show you both ways. So you can type in slash YouTube and just put in the YouTube URL. So if you have a channel and you want to cross link your YouTube channel and your blog post, which is a really good idea, you want to do that if you have videos because that would make people stay on your site longer. Just do slash YouTube, add in the URL, and it will embed your video automatically. For some reason, for me, I don't know if it is the theme or something else wrong. It won't work for me. It'll just show a blank screen. So what I have to do is grab the HTML code of my YouTube video. So I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to go to one of my videos and show you how to grab that code. You have to click on the video, go to share, embed, and then you want to copy all of this and then go here to slash HTML, custom HTML, and then you can paste that in there. And then that is what people are going to see in the front end is they're going to see this playable video. I also always just in case link the video somewhere else, like check out my channel so like you people can watch the video because for some reason on the phone, this doesn't show up here. You always want to check does it work on the phone and does it work on the computer as expected? Otherwise, you could be in trouble. I also want to show you the table of contents. So I used to have a plugin that would automatically put in a table of contents into 
my blog post. I figured out that it was slowing down my site when I was trying to figure out how to speed it up. And it was suggested that I download a plugin. Instead of having an automatic table of contents, I have something called Guten TOC, a table of contents Gutenberg block. And this is one of the reasons that I like Gutenberg. You can actually download plugins that will give you more options and more blocks to add into Gutenberg. And this is what I have done here. So if we click on this, you can see there is a ton of different options. You can pick to, if you want to initially hide it or show it, I just keep mine hidden and you can decide what tags you want listed, the width, the background color, and then this is what it will look like when people actually click on it. And this right here doesn't slow down your site as much as the other plugin that I was using. So if you want a table of contents, highly recommend that you have one. It makes Google happy. It makes people coming to your site happy. Definitely recommend Guten TOC. And to get this block, all you have to do is type in slash advanced table of contents and it will pull up your table of contents. And one last thing for the basic plugins. If you have an email list and you want to add in any freebies, specifically if you have a convert kit, you can also add that as a block. Let's say I want to add in a freebie to get people to sign up for my email list. The plugin that I use is called convert kit because that is my email provider. Highly recommend convert kit. If you don't have an email provider or you're looking to switch, you can download convert kit and just do slash D O N and the convert kit stuff will pop up. If you have any products or broadcasts that you want to put in, I personally do the form that will show up and then you can choose whatever form that you want and it will automatically put that form into your blog post or you can come down to the end and you'll see convert kit form here. You can have a default one. This will then put a convert kit form at the end of your blog post. Now let's talk about the ways that I generally structure my blog post because that is super important for getting people to stay on your blog longer. The first thing I want to talk about is just kind of general stuff. So I always have an affiliate link disclosure on top of all of my blog posts, whether or not I use affiliate links. I would say 90% of my blog posts do use affiliate links because you always want to have some sort of ways to make money in your blog post if it's relevant. You obviously don't want to be talking about simple ways to spend less time online and put a link to an LG smart fridge. That's not going to help you. And you can also see the way that my blog post is space it's pretty much one sentence a line. And the reason for that is it's going to be extremely short paragraphs. And this is what it's going to look like on the computer. However, if we go to mobile, which is where most of my traffic comes from, the paragraphs are going to be a lot bigger because it's a smaller screen. So you don't want to have huge paragraphs. But let's say even just three sentences, this is what people are going to see if you have three sentences on your blog post. That is a lot of text. Someone's going to see that and go, nope, I'm not reading that. And I have proof that this works. If you look at this one right here, how much I made blogging in one year, people are saying on average 37 seconds on this blog post, which is not great. And if we look at how it's structured, you can see massive chunks of text. This is how I used to do all of my blog posts. And if we look at how it would look on mobile, no one is going to be reading all of that versus five simple ways to spend less time online as a content creator. You can see people are staying for two minutes and 20 seconds. So that is something to think about when you are structuring your blog post. There are a few other ways that you can break up your text. You can break it up by adding in a table of contents, headings, which we're going to get into here in a minute. And you can also use bullet points or you can use something like a video or photos, which I've already showed you how to put in. And every single one of your blog posts should have a Pinterest ready graphic that people can pin. And then of course, you always want to put in actual photos into your blog post to help break it up a little bit. Now let's actually get into the headings because headings are super important in your blog post. And there are a few different headings that you can use. So let's get a heading block here. And you see that it automatically goes to H2. And the reason is you never want to have multiple H1 headings in your blog post. H1 is reserved specifically for the blog post title. So the first one that you want to use is H2. And this one right here is an H2. This one down here is an H2. Three. I never use H4, 5, or 6. So the way my blog post is structured is H1 is the title, H2 is for any main points, and H3 is for anything underneath those main points. And then from there, I go to bullet points. And actually, I can show you really quick how my blog post is structured out. This little button right here, it gives you the document overview. So you can see the list view, or you can just see the outline, and it breaks it down a little bit. We have the title, H2, 
H3, H2, and then all H3. Now let's talk about a few of the block customizations that you can do. These arrows will tell you that you can move it down. You can just click on this and it will move your entire block down, which will prevent you from having to retype it out, copy and paste it, whatever. This right here will tell you how to you want arrow text aligned. And if you highlight something, you can bold or italics it. And you can also click control U and it will underline as well. I don't ever have anything underlined unless it is a link because that might confuse people and they might think it's a link. But if you really want to underline something, you can. We're going to talk about links in a second, but this is how you add a link to it. And then you have a few options here. You can create the reusable block from here. You can remove the paragraph as a whole. And I don't really use a whole lot of these either, but you can use those. And then at the side here, you can choose if you want your text to be a different color, your background to be a different color, and you can choose the different sizes. And then you can add some CCS and HTML stuff here if you really want to get into the advanced stuff. Now let's go into putting in links into your blog post because there's a little bit more to it than just dropping a link and being done with it. So I have some links in here. You can see I have a check out my channel and you have the option to open it in a new tab, set to no follow and set to sponsor. This one, since it is a external link, meaning it's leading to external resources, I have it opening in a new tab. This one right here is not set to open in a new tab because it is a internal link. It's leading to somewhere else on my blog. And there is a reason why I have it set up this way because people always have the option to open links links in a new tab. If they right click on them, they can choose open a new tab, which is typically what I do. So I used to have all of my stuff open in a new tab automatically because that is the way that I like things to go. But I was doing some research on it and I learned that that actually can mess up your Google stats. If you have a link open in a new window from your blog post, Google will count that as a bounce. And one of the two things that you want to pay attention to on your blog is the bounce rate and the exit rate percentage, which you can find on your Google analytics. You want those two to be as low as possible because that sends a signal to Google that, that this information is good. People want to stay here and be here and learn and it will help you rank higher in search. However, this is different if you are linking to an external resource because chances are people still want to read your blog post when they click on an external resource. They just want to see the video or they want to see the blog post and see other information about what you're talking about and they still want to finish reading your blog post. If you don't have an external resource, resource opening in a new tab that can hurt your bounce rate because it'll be going back and forth between the two links, which will hurt your bounce rate. And you also have the option to add links into your blog post photos as well. If you go to click on an image, you can click the insert link and paste the URL. So I do this if I want to add in an affiliate link to one of my things, or if I have a product of mine that I have a picture for. And this makes it easy for people to interact with your blog post because sometimes if they're on a phone, it might be hard to click this link but clicking on the picture might be a little bit easier for them. You can see with this link here that I do have it set to open in a new tab because it is an external resource. And I also have this one set to no follow. So let's talk about no follow and do follow. No follow is whenever you have an affiliate link or a sponsored link. Whenever you are getting something from that link, if people interact with it, click on it, buy something from it, you want it set to no follow. And the explanation for this is a little bit confusing, but the way that I see it is if you have a link on your blog, Google will follow through to that link to see what you are linking to. And when they do that, there is a little bit of what they call link juice that will be switched between the two. And if you are getting paid for that, Google doesn't want that to happen. It will tell Google, okay, this site is a good authority because people are linking to it. They want people to go to it. So whenever you link to an external resource, Google is following it and it's giving more authority to whatever website you link to. When you are getting paid or potentially getting paid to put a link on your blog post, like with an affiliate link, Google doesn't want that transaction to happen. So you have to put it as no follow, which tells Google don't follow through to this link. However, let's say you're linking to a blog post from somebody else. Google will follow through to that link. Or if you're even linking to one of the things on your blog, you see this one is not set to no follow. Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's pretty confusing. I'm sure there are other people that could explain it better than me. And in fact, if I can 
find people that are going to be explaining it better than me, I will leave some links down below in the description. And if you can link to external resources, it's a good idea to do that because it will give your site more credibility. It will help out somebody else's site. However, you do want to be careful when you are linking to external resources. I don't want to look up that keyword, spend less time online and go to the first blog post that's ranking and link back to that. If you are targeting a keyword, you don't want to link to a resource that is on the first page of that keyword because that's your competition. But if you find a different blog post that is ranking for a different keyword, then you can do that. And if you wanna learn more about beginner WordPress, check out this video right here. Make sure to like if you like and subscribe to my channel down below for more videos just like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye.